Welcome to Kuwait's Industrial Automation and Control Systems Cybersecurity Conference, KIAX Cybersecurity 2014, 25 through 26 May 2014. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Poria speaking there. Thank you very much. And for session six today, I am delighted to introduce Amit Verma, who is the product manager of industry customer services at Siemens AG. And here this morning to talk on the subject of, of industrial control systems, security, landscape, and trends. He's a patent holder in information and data security from the US Patent um, Office. He has extensive expertise in industrial security systems and cyber security. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Amit Verma. Very good morning uh, to all of you, and thanks for the nice introduction. My name is Amit Verma. Uh, I am from the industry customer services at Siemens. First of all, uh, allow me to thank the organizing team for uh, the opportunity to be here and present and speak on this important topic of cybersecurity here today. So, so far we have witnessed three industrial revolutions. And today we are on the verge of being face to face with the fourth industrial revolution, which we call Industry 4.0. Now, what does Industry 4.0 mean? It means millions of interconnected devices. It means increased integration of all the networks. It means the Internet of Things. It means cloud. It means data. So to be in line with this trend, Siemens is adopting a unique concept of data-driven services. So data-driven services are all about gathering data from a plant, converting that data into smart data, and providing smart services based on the smart data to create business value. Now, as we see, cybersecurity is a prerequisite for this development. You cannot have the systems interconnected unless you have the basic cybersecurity measures in place, unless you have the basic assurances from a security perspective. So Siemens industrial security services are a part of data-driven services. And today, uh, I'm going to present some possibly unique perspectives on security aspects of a production environment. Perhaps uh, it's a common view that due to the characteristics of the production environment, uh, security in these environments is difficult to implement. But can we look at it differently? Let's have a look. So let me uh, spend a couple of seconds in defining what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the production environment or the operation technology environment. So this is a typical network uh, architecture which is there in these environments. So at the top level, we have the MES and SAP systems, which are closer to the IT environment. Then we have the SCADA servers, engineering stations, clients. Then we have the PLCs, control units, HMIs, and the field level. And this architecture is like prevalent in oil and gas, in chemical, in pharma, in all related industry verticals. So this is the structure that we are encountering. Now let me do a classic comparison once again of OT versus IT. Now in IT, uh, the priority set is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality of data is of prime importance. So to, to take an example, if I happen to, uh, if my laptop is not available to me for half an hour, Probably it doesn't concern me as much as I would be concerned of if somebody happens to steal my data. And in an OT environment, the priority set is just the reverse. Availability is of prime importance. So availability of uh, critical processes, availability of critical machines, availability of critical infrastructure, that has the prime importance. Another key differentiating aspect is the life cycle 
that these two environments have. An IT environment typically has two to four years life cycle. So probably uh, every year or every half an year, we are bombarded with new software releases, new kinds of hardware and software. So this is typical in an IT environment. While in an OT environment, the life cycle is pretty much long. It's 12 to 20 years. There are infrequent updates to firmware, hardware, and software in a production environment. Another key differentiator is the maintenance windows, availability of maintenance windows. The IT team have the luxury of uh, going into a scheduled maintenance activity perhaps every week. And this luxury is not available to the guys in the production environment because the production systems have to run 24 cross 7 all around the year. So there are just sporadic maintenance windows, if at all they are there. So traditionally, the cyber attacks were concentrated in the IT environment. But now there has been an explosion of cyber attacks on the production environment. And many speakers yesterday and today have referenced to various instances of these attacks. Now, what are the characteristics of the OT environment which make implementation of cybersecurity difficult? So let's spend a few minutes on these characteristics. The first is the long life cycle. So the updates to the firmwares are not available frequently, which leaves the firmware vulnerable. There is limited vendor support. Patches are available, but implementing those patches are not perhaps practical at all times, because many industrial segments have a long certification process before they can apply the, the patches in their production environment. So these are the challenges which arise due to long life cycle of these products, of this environment. And they have high availability requirement. You need a maintenance window for a patching or an upgrade. These systems have to run continuously. The third aspect is vendor diversity. So in a typical control system environment, there are various vendors, there are various system integrators that come together and work on various aspects of the control system. So due to the diverse nature of these vendors, having a standard security approach in these systems is difficult. The ICS systems are customized, and these are driven by customized functional requirements. And sometimes how this is implemented is in the form of uh, ActiveX controls, in the form of custom scripts, action scripts, and so on. And these things are dangerous. These, these cause a lot of security vulnerabilities. Perhaps the most challenging aspect is the prevalence of proprietary protocols. So there are vendors who base their solution on standard and documented protocols. But there are also vendors who have proprietary communication in the network. So IT security systems have limited applicability in these kind of environments. So we are tempted to believe that cybersecurity is difficult, if not impossible, to implement in this kind of an environment. So this perhaps is the traditional thought. But how can we think it differently? The new perspective is that the same characteristics are enablers in an OT environment. Let's look at some of the enablers. An OT environment is diverse, but it's a static environment. So what does this mean for cybersecurity? The static nature has tremendous advantages for cybersecurity. There are established communication partners in the network in terms of the IP addresses over which they communicate, in terms of the data packets that they communicate. So establishing an anomaly detection system or a behavioral analysis system in these kind of environments is more easy as compared to the IT environment. In an OT environment, there are a definite set of processes which are running on a system. So implementation of whitelisting is easier. In an IT environment, there are loads of processes, and you don't know which one to whitelist. Third point is about the antivirus thing. Once an update of the antivirus is validated in an OT environment, we can be reasonably confident that we will not be receiving many false positives, which is not the case in an IT environment. 
So this is an enabler. A static environment is an enabler. The second enabler is built-in redundancy. Production environments have uh, redundant uh, PLCs, Ethernet fiber rings, uh, redundant SCADA servers, even redundant IOs. So how can we use redundancy to devise cybersecurity? So we can, reduce, we can leverage redundancy to devise a gradual implementation of the security concepts in a defensive way. So this does not, this, this should have a minimal impact on the business operations. Yesterday, a gentleman from Saudi Aramco, he raised up a question and said, uh, cybersecurity impacts our business operations. So probably one of the answers is this, use redundancy to have a phased approach of the implementation of security controls. And this also allows us to have a rollback and a disaster recovery plan for the security implementation. The IT solutions cannot be imported in an OT environment in a plug and play fashion. But having said that, we don't have to reinvent the wheel either. There's a mix of both these approaches that we need. And what is the management perspective of all these things? The management perspective is twofold. Firstly, there are one-time upfront costs involved in establishing the security baseline and in establishing a security roadmap for a gradual risk reduction program. So this is a one-time cost for, uh, which can be considered as a CapEx investment. Now security is not a one-time topic. It's a continuous topic. We cannot implement security today and go away. No, we have to look at it in a continuous way. So the second part is about having a fixed, predictable, operational, and transparent budget for the ongoing security operations throughout the life cycle. So these are the two management perspectives out of all these aspects. Now, similar to the characteristics of the OT environment, there are unique trends in the OT environment that help in the implementation of cybersecurity. And these requirements are driven by, uh, by enterprise visibility and productivity, and enhancing productivity. And these trends also introduce new threats. Now let's spend a couple of minutes on understanding this. The first is remote access. Now we see many OEMs today who connect to their systems remotely to service them, to resolve problems. Why do they do this? To cut down the travel time of the service engineer, to be cost efficient in delivering the service, to reduce the downtime of the plant. And what is the threat implication? Remote access perhaps opens a back door, and uh, the ICS environment is now connected to the internet world or the outside world. So this is the security implication. Wireless network. Now we, we are uh, ever increasingly hearing the industrial wireless LAN. There's a great prevalence of industrial wireless sensors and devices which are there. And these have their obvious advantages, but these also uh, expose new attack surfaces. Third is in the, uh, increasing integration of the shop floor and the business systems. Now, traditionally, there has been a perceived air gap between these two worlds. I call it perceived because the actual air gap is not there. It's only perceived. You never know how these things can be connected. So traditionally, there has been a, a perceived air gap, but now there is an increasing requirement to link these two worlds together to gain productivity advantages. Now, when you link both these, both these two worlds together, we also allow for new ways of attack propagation from, from one environment to the other and vice versa. Last but not the least, there is an increasing trend of virtualization. So virtualization, again, has its obvious benefits, but there are threats involved as well. Earlier, we had to protect probably one operating system. Now we have to protect the guest operating systems as well as the, the base operating system, which is the virtualizer or similar things. 
Yesterday I was talking to a security expert and he pointed an incident where uh, unintentionally uh, infected uh, image OS, uh, image of the virtualized environment was rolled over in a, uh, in a, in a organization. And you can imagine what could be the security implications of this. So these trends are there in the positive direction, but they also involve inherent risks. Now, there are two options. One is we say we don't adopt these trends. We don't allow the OEMs to connect, connect remotely. We don't allow wireless uh, things in, in our production environment. We don't have the integration of uh, shop floor and IT systems. We don't have virtualization. And the second option is that we embrace these, these uh, trends to increase productivity, to go to the next level of productivity. And cybersecurity is an enabler for doing that. So basically, these same trends which give rise to new threats also give an advantage, also give an opportunity to rethink and redesign OT security. Now, what are some of the specific uh, opportunities? An opportunity for having a greater visibility into the assets in an environment. Now, how many plant managers know what exactly is there in their environment? What are the kind of devices that are there in their environment? And if they don't know what are the devices, what are the exact devices, then how will, will they know how to protect them? So this is about having a comprehensive documentation and having a comprehensive inventory of all the systems that are there in the environment. Remote access, wireless trends, these call for secure access methods, ever increasing secure access methods. We have to be innovative here. It's access, secure access methods don't necessarily mean having passwords and those things. We have to be more innovative here. Third is user awareness. Uh, once I was in a plant and uh, I saw there was an operator who was using his mobile device on an HMI. He was charging his mobile device on an HMI. Now, this is a very dangerous thing. Not the mobile device, but the connection of mobile device and the HMI. So mobile device is an internet ga gateway. When you connect this to the HMI, you are connecting your control system to the external world, to the internet. And what is there on the internet can be found on the internet. And what can be found in the inter on the internet can be attacked. So this is a very risky thing. So we have to focus on user awareness, ever increasing user awareness of the people who are there in the automation environment. Last but not the least, it's more about uh, having uh, comprehensive site surveys, having network redesigns to counter these trends. Now, what is the management perspective? Traditionally, it has been thought that cybersecurity is a cost. Implementing cybersecurity is a cost. Now, what we are saying is cybersecurity is an enabler for increased productivity. It helps you go to the next level of productivity. So it should not be treated as a cost. It should be treated as an investment. So cybersecurity is not a cost, it's an investment. So this is a change in perspective that we have to bring in. And with this change in perspective, the implementation of cybersecurity aspects becomes easier. Now let's see how the change in perspective comes in with different stakeholders who are there in the plant environment. So here's this guy, plant manager. I think the phone will not be readable from the back. I will read this out. So here is this plant manager. He says, uh, I have limited budget for cybersecurity. Fortunately, the case has become easier for me because cybersecurity has positive implications on productivity. So I'm going to go ahead and implement it. Then there's this production manager. He says, Cyber security project can help me too because it allows me to increase production. I will support it as long as it does not disrupt production. Then there's this maintenance manager. He also says, uh, I have a clear benefit from the visibility aspects of cybersecurity and I go ahead and implement it and I support it as long as it does not disrupt production. Now here is this poor guy. Uh, who is always at loggerheads with the people on the shop floor. 
he says there's a change in perspective now on the shop floor, and I'm seeing an opportunity to secure it along with my enterprise environment with limited budget. So life has become easier for him. Now there's this guy, cybersecurity officer. He says cybersecurity now can be made a reality. People are aligned. I have the budget, I have the time, but I don't have the expertise. How can I go ahead and implement cybersecurity? So the key here is professional planning and expert execution. Now, what can be an approach for a professional planning and expert execution? This I would uh, try to outline in the next couple of minutes. And here I'll talk about designing a comprehensive cybersecurity program based on the relevant standards which are prevalent in the industry. So this program is like coming from, it's derived from the NIST standards, the IEC standards, and other relevant standards. I mean, you might find that this slide is a little bit colorful. So there's a definite reason why it has been kept this way. So the color coding scheme is used by uh, the security standards that are prevalent in the industry. So we have used the same color coding scheme. So the security framework has like five different modules. The first module is about identification of risks. The second is about implementing security controls to protect, those, protect against those risks. And the thir third is about uh, detecting the incidences and responding to those incidences and recovering from those incidences. Now let's see how can we go about doing that. Identification of risk can be done by a security assessment. It's a comprehensive security assessment uh, which involves two P's, two P's plus one T, people, processes, and technology. Protecting is all about implementing secure policies and procedures, user awareness trainings. It's about hosting technical controls like uh, endpoint protection, antivirus, whitelisting, system hardening, and so on. It's also about hosting network technical controls, which is perimeter protection, network segmentation, firewall implementation. So this is the hard stuff that is coming in. Once this baseline is complete, we enter into a continuous attack surface reduction and monitoring. Now I'll repeat, security is not a one-time topic. It's a continuous thing. So the first two aspects are, are one-time aspects, perhaps. And the third is the continuous thing. And here, it's quite important that we have inputs from a global threat security center, a kind of a global intelligence for security in the third step. So if we look at it, the first one is about determining the security posture. The second is about establishing a security baseline. And the third is about managing the entire cybersecurity lifecycle. And this is a risk reduction program for cybersecurity. Now, this kind of a program will give you complete control on the security aspects of your operations environment. So you don't worry about the security aspects. You worry, you worry, you worry about the forward-looking stuff. You have to bring an in innovation to the production environment. So I would like to conclude by saying that time is the only constant, and we have to embrace the change. And cybersecurity is an enabler to embrace the change. Thank you very much. Okay then, uh, thank you all very much, and uh, thank you. <laughs>